What's up guys, my name is Chris and we are checking out a quick overview of the whole Trek Dual Sport series. So as you may have seen some previous comparison before with the Trek Merlins and other bikes previously, this is going to be a quick go over all of the bikes in that series to see what the difference is to help you decide whether it's worth it for you or not. Let's get to it. All right, so the Trek Dual Sport Series is Trek's kind of all-purpose, all-terrain commuter bike slash comfort speed goer. It's a little bit of an interesting topic. So definitely by far the most popular model for that price range is the Trek Merlin, as you may have seen many of the other videos. But to many people, does the faster rolling commuting or just faster rolling get around and or the lack of mountain biking that they will be doing. And that's where the Trek Dual Sport comes in. Trek also has the FX series, but that is too much commuter, too much speed, and not enough comfort and kind of usability to it. All right, let's go over a few points that make the Dual Sport different from say the Trek Merlin series. All right, so if you're already looking at the Dual Sport, you'll have noticed two main differences. One, the tire is a lot skinnier than a mountain bike and two, the suspension has a lot less travel. So what this is gonna mean is essentially exactly what you'll think. In mountain bike terms, it's worse. It's not gonna have the traction you want and over bigger bumps, it's not gonna take those hits as comfortably, easily and or as aggressively, not that you'd be doing it on this bike anyway. So the Trek Dual Sport Series comes in four different models. As they each go up, they get better suspension, shifting, brakes, and a few additional features as with pretty much every bike model on the market. Okay, so let's start at the very top of this number one list here with the Trek Dual Sport 4. Trek does as numerically, the higher the number, the better the part spec, the lower the number, the lower the part spec. So the Trek Dual Sport 4 is the top of the line. With this, you're getting hydraulic disc brakes, really good ones at that. You are getting a one by 11 drivetrain. So this is one gear on the front, 11 speeds on the back, giving you this nice, huge range but very simple to use drivetrain. As well, you actually get remote lockout. So this is something you'd normally see in a $4,000 full suspension in the top fuel kind of range, uh, maybe a little bit less, but this is one of the most affordable times you can get uh, a, a lockout from fork, which is pretty impressive. It's a pretty simple mechanism. It pretty plasticky, it doesn't feel super high end, but it does its job really well. And with that remote bar, option having the controls right there you will use it more that means your commute will be faster your climbing hills will be faster everything will be improved when you need that suspension off as opposed to all the other models or any other bike with a manual lockout on the fork you just rarely ever use it because by the time you're switching to an uphill or realize you can use it it's not even worth your time back to that drivetrain this is the shimano 1x11 dior system so it's a fast shifting setup, big range on the back. So you're gonna have pretty much the exact same overall range as some of the lower levels, but you do miss out on some of the finer increments, which as an entry level bike could be a downside to some people. As well with the Dual Sport 4, you are actually getting tubeless ready tires and rims. So this is something a commuter may benefit from by removing those tubes. You're gonna cut a little bit of weight, plus remove the chances of a flat pretty high, especially in the kind of commuting world. A lot of the flats are pinch flats from dropping off curbs or debris on the road where it's actually piercing it. And this solves a lot of that problem by going tubeless. As you step down to the Dual Sport 2, you continue with that tubeless setup but the gearing changes. So with the Dual Sport 3, you are actually downgrading, kind of, to the 2x9. So you actually get a really good wide range on the front as well as a really wide range on the rear. This gives you the most optimal amount of uh, gearing choices to choose while commuting. I prefer this style of shifting for commuting purposes because you're always gonna have a finer little changes in the rear end and the bigger changes in the front. This means you will be able to find that perfect gear for a longer commute with the right amount of power, but not too much power, than you would potentially with the 1x11. As well, you still get a nice hydraulic disc brake setup, not as high-end as the 
Dual Sport 4, which is sharing some of its kind of siblings in the Track Maryland 7, Fuel X5. It's a pretty powerful brake on the 4, but for general all purpose kind of use, the hydraulic disc brake on the Dual Sport 3 is excellent. The suspension on the Dual Sport 3 is also quite good. It will absorb most of the bumps and hits for general commuting and light trail, just as the Dual Sport 4 did, but they removed that remote lockout. So it's still gonna perform well. You may not turn off your suspension as much as you did before. I don't know if that's a big deal or not. Most of the suspensions now at this kind of level or higher are fairly efficient where they actually perform really well whether or not you're locking it out. When you drop down another level to a Dual Sport 2, that's where you might notice some kind of squishiness to it, not as high performing. It's not gonna respond as well, but it still has that remote lockout. You lose that two by nine and go to a three by eight. So a little more similar in the rear end as a Marlin 6 with a nice little range to it, but continuing to keep that commuter side of things or that city street side of things with three gears on the front. There's no real downside to having a lot of gears unless you're doing a lot of trail riding. And then it gets a little complicated, loose chain, it, it's just not an all around good idea. In commuting though, no real downside. You get that huge range in the front and a good range in the back and you're gonna be set. Obviously, as you come down these levels, the shifting speed is going to decrease and the efficiency of the shift is going to decrease. So they just won't shift as nicely as the higher models. That doesn't mean it's not a good setup. It just means if you compare the two, you would notice a difference and really you would. If you took them both for a test ride, it, it's a snappy difference. Especially that Dual Sport 4, that Dior system is really nice. Dual Sport 2 and 3, definitely a little more on the edge. When you can now come down to a Dual Sport 2 or 1, there's a big difference. That Tawny stuff is good, reliable shifting, but there's definitely better out there. You compare it to any higher end level, and you notice the shifting is just that much sharper, that much quicker. You will notice a downgrade from the two to the one in the shifting. It is just that much different. Um, similar ranges, similar styles. You've got seven on the back, three on the front, but the speed and the efficiency at which it shifts will be noticeable between those two models, very much so. If you are looking for something with more performance, definitely look at two or higher, but if you're looking for a budget one which will get you around town and will not have too many issues, not too much to worry about, the entry level Dual Sport 1 is an excellent bike, shares the same shifting setup as the 2021 Merlins. It is a good from fork, nothing special there, but it will work for what you need. And still a respectable front brake. It does go down to the mechanical disc, but it actually still gets a nice bike to it. And maintenance costs are very cheap on both mechanical or hydraulic. Hydraulic, you generally don't have to do much to, except for the brake pads, as usual. But when you do, it's a little more expensive because it's a full bleed. Could be every five, six years or onwards. Whereas mechanical, very simple, it's a $10 cable. You simply slide out the old one and put in the new one. Very easy, even a shop charges almost nothing for it. So it's up to you to decide which model you think is for you. Um, obviously, the more you spend, the better bike it'll be both in town and off road. Now, the Dual Sport is designed to kind of go anywhere, but there is a degree to that. With the off road side of things, you will be going much slower than the mountain bike counterpart, which would be the Trek Merlin series. On the streets, though, you'll be going much faster due to the smaller wheel size and width with less rolling resistance. All the tires throughout all four of them are much faster rolling. Whether or not you get the tubeless, it's just gonna roll a lot smoother and a lot easier on smoother, ro rollable terrain. As you get into the rougher, bumpier stuff, that's where a bigger tire might be more beneficial and you might look at something else. If you're doing kind of what I call campground trails, where they're generally lightweight and you're not really racing down them, you're just taking from the camper to the ice cream shop, classic ice cream reference, um, the Dual Sport will do them all. If you're looking to potentially do some mountain biking, we'll buy a mountain bike because that's what it's made for, right? All right, I hope this was somewhat helpful for you. Um, I don't have any in stock to show you, so I'm gonna flash through a few more pictures of similar perspects, similar stuff. 
The Dual Sport is a great option for anyone looking to commute, to get a nice, comfortable, more upright position than a mountain bike, and someone who needs to go off-road, but they're not gonna go off-roading. That's the big difference to it. My name's Chris, subscribe down below, and good luck.